Here with fourth year head coach Brooke Stork from Northwestern State Women's Basketball. Coach, we're in Prather Coliseum where we are every week this time or Tuesday mornings, but we're going to be here Wednesday night for the first time in what feels like forever. So welcome home. Thank you. It's good to be back home. Um, I think our players are excited to be playing a couple home games this week and we've had a rough five of six on the road and that, that wears on you. You know, that's no excuse, um, you know, but it's it. It wears on you, you know, they're, they've been on the road. We're tired of living out of a bag and excited to play in front of our fans and um, be back on our home court. Uh, you know, there's different coaches say different reasons for winning at home and playing better at home. In your estimation, what's the biggest advantage to being at home? Is it being in a routine? Is it some people say sleeping in your own bed. What's your take on that? I think some of that plays into it, but I think we have a really great home court advantage from, from our crowd standpoint. I think we draw as well as anyone in the league. and. Um, I think our fans understand when to get loud, when to provide support, and um, there's nothing more that a, a student athlete feeds off of than you know having someone in the stands and um, feeling that support and you know that extra sixth man. You know our band does a tremendous job. Our spirit squad, they're all they they're all actively involved in providing a great home court advantage, and um, you know we have very few. Uh, home game opportunities left this season and I just encourage everybody to come out and provide that support. It's been um, a really tough place to play and uh, it's been really good to us and we hope that uh, we can continue that and make it even better as we head down the stretch in conference play. Throughout the early fall we often see your team in the stands for volleyball matches, uh, soccer games, things of that nature. On the other side, you see a lot of athletes come into your games, other sports. What does that mean from a from a, an athletic department standpoint, from a coaching standpoint? Well, I think it says a lot about our department. I think all of the coaches um, at this place, above any university I've been a part of, the department really, the coaches really support one another. And um, you know, sometimes it's hard because you're pulled in a lot of different directions. We all have families. You know, our our children have different activities that and stuff that we're all involved with. And um, I think when you see other coaches taking time out of their busy schedule to be there, um, to support you, um, to have their teams there, I think it's it just a great camaraderie within our department. And it's really neat, I think, for our student athletes to see their peers um, supporting them and cheering them on. And, um, and they know they do the same thing for others. So I think it's just a, it's a really good atmosphere within our department. Big one coming up, not only being back home, but a team that's directly ahead of you in the stands in Central Arkansas. And it's a you and Sandra Rushing came in the same year, I believe, or she may be a year after. But you guys, it's become a very competitive rivalry the last few years. Well, I think any time the two teams play, you know, first thing, it's there's no greater way that, to get ready for your next game when the you know the team you're playing is someone that's that's ranked very high in the standings, is, has a, a really good record, and um, is going to challenge you in a lot of ways. Um, I think that you know they're they're a very tough defensive team. We're going to have to do a great job of of handling their defense and, and being able to execute and, and find ways to score. Um, and then on the flip side of that, they've got a great um, a great little roster in terms of uh, a really good scorer and Maggie Prophet and they've done a, a really good job, Sandra has, of, of putting people around her that really complement what they do. Um, I think that they've scored the basketball better uh, this year than what they have in, in the past, but they're still um, go going to grind it out. It's going to be one of those tough games. I think when you look at all the games that we've played them, um, you know, we've beaten him here the last three years, um, beat them in the tournament last year. We've yet to go there and win, uh, but they've also yet to win here. So I think that it's a very, um, I think it's a great rivalry in terms of, you know, you're going to get a tough, grinded out game. It's not going to be pretty. Uh, both teams are going to just really have to find ways to win. We've talked about it a little bit after Saturday's game, but your freshman post, Cheyenne Brown, 10 points, 12 rebounds, first double-double of her career, first double-double of the season for you guys. but. Are we at the point of the season where you can almost stop calling them freshmen with 10 games left? Well, I think that we have to. I think that those those young players have played enough minutes that you know we're into almost into February, and at this point in the season, um, you don't refer to them as freshmen anymore. They're still going to make mistakes, just like um, returners do. Uh, but I think they're they've gained experience, and especially as many minutes as some of them have played inside for us and and against. Um, you know, top five teams. You know, they've they've been in the toughest battles, and the biggest thing for them is they're experiencing conference play. They're experiencing what it means to go on the road and have to concentrate and have to be focused for 40 minutes and not taking possessions off. And so that's something that you know, from a consistency standpoint, they're still growing and still learning. But um, when you when you have a play like she did, you know, to to send us into overtime where it wasn't 
a play that was drawn up for her. She went and got the ball and put it in. She understood we needed to score, and she went and grabbed an offensive rebound and and was able to get um, get us tied and send us to overtime. And um, you know, on the flip side of that, as they're learning defensively, you know, she and Emerald and and Libba and uh, Gabby Jackson got some minutes on Saturday at some critical time and. Um, you know, I think that they're continuing to grow and learn, and I think the more we can get them experienced um, in those situations, when we get to tournament time and, and the most important time of the year, they're ready to go. There was a pretty intense interaction with you, intense in a good way with you and, and Cheyenne after she scored that bucket. What did you tell her? Well, I just uh, told Saturday. her, I said, that's a big time play. You know, you, you didn't relax, you didn't, and, and this is what they're all gonna say is they, it's really easy. We're, we're hard on our players. We're, we, want, we demand the best of them from an energy, a concentration, and effort standpoint, and they, they understand that. I think it's a big shock for um, any freshman when they go to the Division I level to be held accountable and, um, and, and forced to do, do things like concentrate for 40 minutes. That's really hard because at the high school level, you're just bigger or faster or stronger than everybody else, and they're used to dominating. And so. For her to make that play at a critical time, I was just really proud of her. And I think that sometimes those young players, all they hear is when you critique or correct instead of, you know, you could give them seven praises, but they remember that one negative thing that, you, that they've heard and, um, you know, or the coaching. And I just wanted her to understand that, hey, that's a big time play right there. Regardless of what year you are, you went and made a play. And it wasn't, like I said earlier, something drawn up for her. She just went and made a play, and our team needed it. And um, you know, it was it was a big moment for her, and hopefully, she'll gain a lot of confidence from that. Look ahead toward the weekend. Southeastern Louisiana comes in. It's another team you split with home and road last season. You mentioned it this morning. You know, they're an athletic team. I guess in some ways, a lot like the Dimbas at ACU. Yeah, and I think that they've got a perimeter. Um, you look at what Hernandez and um, they'll do on the perimeter. They can really Anderson. They can really shoot the three, and they'll. Uh, They'll stretch your zone and, and force you to um, really contest and, and find a way to uh, move and rotate and get to shooters, get hands up. But they also have Nana Poole inside that's a really, really active rebounder. She is um, a good scorer for them in terms of her activity, being able to get second chance points opportunities for them. And we've got to do a great job of limiting their transition looks and then forcing them to execute on the offensive end. Um, and then we've got to go attack them and be able to score. Um, you know, I think controlling tempo and um, taking care of the basketball will be huge. Um, but for us, the difference for us this year in conference play has been, you know, the battle on the boards. We lost the battle on um, Saturday at McNeese by four, but in, it, it came down to we needed one defensive rebound. The last possession that they had um, with about 58 seconds left, we give up two offensive boards that gets kicked out for three, and those are the threes that you can't contest. And um, when you give a team that shoots, you know, in the 30% range from the field, when you give them an opportunity three times, they're probably going to hit one of the three. And um, you know, I'm not a genius, but math-wise, that's it's right in that area. So I think that you know that's what our team has to do. We've got to secure the glass and and not allow easy second chance points. Make people execute. And I think when we've been at our best defensively, we've been able to do that. Finish defensive possessions with a board. Wednesday, we'll kick it back real quick there. Uh, another special guest, sort sort of on the radio with Tony. Dr. Henderson's coming back for a repeat appearance. I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to him last year, but that's pretty impressive for the university president to come in, take time out of his schedule. You mentioned coaches taking time out of theirs, but for him to come down and join the broadcast and, and probably be there to ask you questions after the game, a pretty unique situation. It is. I, I mean, I don't think, and I said this last year, I don't think there's any other Division One president in the, in the nation that's uh, doing that. Um, number one, it makes us feel good from a from a department standpoint that he is um, has an emphasis on athletics and the importance that it is to the university, um, what it provides from a recruiting standpoint, not only for student athletes but for regular students um, and enrollment. Um, I think that when he's doing that for women's basketball. I think that it shows his love and passion for our sport. Um, and as a coach of that sport and a, a mother of a daughter, I, I appreciate that. It shows that someone in leadership is um, taking time to acknowledge what our student athletes do. And I know he's very proud of our program and what our student athletes represent and what they do in the classroom and on our campus. All right, thanks coach.